Hey guys, we're back to do another one. Uh, this time it's going to be uh, rigid body chains. So uh, what we're going to do is create a nice ball and chain system and just get it all hooked up. I got a basic scene here in Unity with a nice plane and a sun. I'm going to hop over into Blender. If you don't have Blender, please go download it at blender.org. It's amazing software. We're going to delete our default cube by selecting and then hitting X. Shift A to add an object. Go to Mesh, Torus. All right. I'm going to shift my view around here with 3 to get a side view. I'm going to rotate it with R by 90 degrees. Then we're going to go into Edit Mode with Tab. Hit Z and pop over to Wireframe so we can see nice. Uh, let's see, Alt A. And then we're going to B to box select, Ooh, if I can get it done, there we go. And then we're going to take these and hit G and Z, so G for grab and then Z for the Z axis and move it up. we got a nice chain length. And that should work fine, I'm going to add in some extra edge loops just for fun, that's control R. And there we go, we got a basic chain link right there. I'm going to right click and hit Shade Smooth. Wait, it's not all blocky, but we don't have to use, uh, you know, a high poly object. Go to Materials and hit Add New Material. Doesn't really matter what you make it. Like I said, uh, this this chain effect, the, the, the method we're doing, it'll work with uh, just about anything, vines and ropes and chords. Now we're going to add a sphere object the same way we just did the uh, torus object. Shift A, Mesh, Sphere. Right click, hit Shade Smooth. Alright, now we got a nice ball and a chain connected to it. Going to give the ball its own material. That looks good, nice and simple. We're going to take this and duplicate it with Shift D, drag it over here. So now we have that, just that link selected. We're going to go to Export FBX. And I like to drop things right into my Assets folder, that way it's right there. So I'm going to find my Assets folder for this current project. Alright, and then come down here and just name it whatever you want. Make sure it's got the FBX at the end, .FBX. And then also up here, make sure Selected Objects is selected. Otherwise, it will export your entire scene. Now we're going to go over here, select our ball, and then hold Shift and select our connected chain link. Same thing, File Export, FBX. Already in our Assets folder, we'll just rename it. And again, make sure Selected Objects is ticked. All right, that's all for Blender. Nice, quick, and easy, right? We're going to pop back over into Unity, and we already have our objects loaded in. We can start dragging them into our scene and getting them set up. So I'm going to drag just one chain link in, and we'll see if we can get it to a more appropriate scale. We're going to pop over to Component, go down to Physics, and select rigid body. All right, with it selected, hold control and hit D to duplicate that object, and then we're going to rotate it on the X, nope, we are going to rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees, and then pull it up so that the chains are interlocked within each other. Now for this one, we're going to add another component. Go to Physics, and we're going to select Hinge Joint. Here we can grab our original link from our hierarchy and drag it down to Connected Rigid Body. So we're going to need to give our chain links their appropriate colliders. So again, Physics, and this time we're going to go for Mesh Collider. 
All right, also you want to make sure that convex is triggered. And now when we hit play, our objects fall and impact the ground. They're a little above it because of our box collider not lining up properly, but that's not a big deal. We can move those things around. So now that we have that set up, with our top chain selected, we're going to select Is Kinematic. And then we're going to take our bottom chain link and duplicate it. That's Shift D. And then rotate it on the Y axis back to zero. And then we're going to connect our link one rigid body into our connected rigid body. So each subsequent chain link needs the previous one on there. I've repeated that process with those selected and just duplicated. Did that twice, and then you can just essentially go back in and plug those objects back where they need to go. So one has two connected body, two has one, three has two, four has three, five has four, six has five. All right, then we're gonna select them all, move them up, and toss in our ball. Now we want to make sure it lines up appropriately, so I'm going to shift our view by clicking right up here in the top right hand corner. This thing's super handy for this. And scale it down. Scale is R by the way, in case this is, you know, one of your first tutorials. All right, then we want to add a component, physics, and we'll do a mesh collider. And then physics, rigid body, and we're going to change the mass to something heavier so it's got a more realistic feel. So our chain links have a mass of 1. We're going to change our ball to a mass of 20. And then we pop down and add in our hinge joint and just make sure our last chain link that we made, in this case number 6, is the connected rigid body. We hit play and we got a physics reactive uh, chain. Now, of course, you can mess around with the uh, the weight system and whatnot to get the effects that you're looking for. Let's see. So one issue you're going to run into if you do make something like this is if you try to rotate this chain on any axis, so you can move it fine, but as soon as you try to rotate it, you're going to run into um, the issues where essentially each individual object has its own pivot point, and you might want to be able to move the object as a whole. So you see, like, they shift whenever they should rotate as a whole. A uh, quick and easy solution to this is to add a parent object. So we're going to go game object, create empty, and then line it up with the very top portion of our chain because the idea is that's the connected portion. So that's where we're going to be orientating from. Then you're going to want to select all the elements of your chain, including the ball, and then drag them and drop them into the game object. I'm going to rename that holder, and that now holds our chain. And we are able to rotate it and move it and scale it freely, which is very nice. All right, it's swinging. A couple things are off about it. It looks like our connection point is not correct right here. So what we can do is pop over here to hinge joint and select edit joint angular limits. And then we can make some tweaks to it to adjust exactly where that hinge is. If we can do it on the appropriate axis. There we go. That's much closer to where the uh, the physics of those objects connecting where that hinge point would be. So that's going to give us a better result right there. Much better. 
they're not spacing apart like they were. And just for funsies, we can toss over a cube. This cube already has a box collider, so we can add in physics, give it a rigid body. And we'll scale it with R. And toss some sort of little texture on there. And we real quick can build a wall just by getting this lined up. And then hit Control D to duplicate. And then you can continuously just select all and double them up. All right, now within less than 30 seconds, I've built uh, a nice little wall out of that cube. And our ball and chain swing right through it, smash through the wall, which is really cool. It looks like... Yeah, it looks like our colliders are still a little bit off. I'm thinking that's due to uh, our ball object here exporting as two objects instead of one. Let's see here. Yep, our chain ball object has a child. So what we're going to do is a move this over just a little bit so the chain is not the impactor but the the ball with the mass is the impactor i'm gonna throw a nice little texture on there and then our chain ball here we're gonna have that selected and then open it up in the hierarchy And we select our sphere object and add our collider, our sphere collider, to that. That's going to work perfect. I'm going to delete our previous collider. Or turn it off convex. And there we go. Now, obviously, you could use this method for all sorts of things, and you can animate it or have it connected to characters or objects. Um, you can do a lot with this, and it's very handy and very easy to set up. While I understand this may have seemed a little complicated, overall, uh, this is one of the easier things to do. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this come in handy for you. If this has been helpful, like, share, subscribe, and check out my game Sweet Pea. Thanks.